Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Coach Goes Back to College. This is week number five of the college football season, episode number six. If you have not joined me for this video before, first of all, welcome in. Second of all, this is kind of how I structure this video. We're going to take a look at week five of college football. We're going to look at a under the radar prospect to know uh, the prospect we're talking about this week. He's kind of put a name for himself on the map last season a little bit and then kind of into this season. So we'll be talking a little bit about him. After that, we'll get over to my personal game of the week. And then after that, we'll go over to my favorite prop of the week, which happens to be a prop for one of tonight's games, Friday night. So if you guys are watching this you know, Saturday morning, do apologize for that. So hopefully you're able to take advantage of that up on prize picks. And I believe it's up on Parlay Play as well. If you're interested in joining either of those two sites, I will have promo codes down in the description below. Second of all, welcome into the Sports Affiliation YouTube channel. Make sure that you are subscribed if you enjoy these videos that I am personally putting out myself with Coach Bo's Back to College, as well as the rest of the crew and all the content they put out throughout the week as well. But without further ado, we'll get into our under the radar prospect for this week. It's going to be quarterback for Duke, Riley Leonard. He is six foot four, two hundred and twelve pounds. And he is projected to run in the four fives in terms of 40 yard dash time, according to draftscout.com. I believe it was four five four is kind of what they have him expected to run. He was a two sport athlete in Alabama for high school. He played basketball, he played football as well. His dad played uh, college basketball. I believe one of his uncles did it as well. Pretty interesting kid here. He's got really good size. He's got a very live arm. He is very athletic too. So he has a lot of the traits you look for in the modern NFL quarterback. I think, you know, coming in last year, you know, first time starter, we saw some really good things out of him. This year, he kind of continued to grow on that. So without going too far into it, we're going to get into like his stats. And 2021, he played seven games as a true freshman backup quarterback. Completed about 60% of his passes at 59.7%, 381 yards, one touchdown, one interception, seven carries on the ground for 47 yards, and two rushing touchdowns. So just keep that in mind. You know, his true freshman quarterback was the backup that season. A lot of guys can't even do that as a true freshman. He's a former three-star recruit, too, as well. I forgot to mention that. Like I said, went to high school in Alabama and was that two uh, sport athlete down there. Really good basketball player as well. And then in 2022, was the full-time starter, 13 games in total. Completed about 64% of his passes that year, so we saw a little bit of an increase there. 63.8% in total. Just under 3,000 passing yards at 2,967. 20 passing touchdowns, 6 interceptions. So he had a pretty good uh, touchdown-interception ratio, especially for a first-time starter. And then he really factored in as well with his legs on the ground. 124 carries, 699 yards, and 13 rushing touchdowns. So he combined ultimately for 33 touchdowns as a first-time starter. You know, a true sophomore at that. So did like what he did and put on tape a lot last season. So far this year, he has led Duke to a 4-0 start. When you look at the total stats, not as impressive as you would kind of like, but uh, completing about 68% of his passes at 67.7%. So a little bit of an increase there once again. 778 passing yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. So still really good touchdown to interception ratio. Has not had to throw a lot of passing touchdowns this season. It's not that they haven't played good teams. They played Clemson. Uh, they played Northwestern. That's kind of in shambles there. And then they played somebody else that was decent too that I can't think of off the top of my head. But their defense has played extremely well. Throughout this season, he's got a pretty good running back in Jordan Waters as well, who's had a lot of rushing touchdowns himself. I believe he's got seven in total, and then I think he had a couple of receiving ones as well. And then uh, when we talk about Riley Leonard, that dual threat mobility once again, 29 carries, 238 yards, and four rushing touchdowns so far this season in four games. So he's averaging a rushing touchdown per game. So definitely does have a high ceiling there in terms of that rushing aspect. Kind of, you know, like I said, with the build that he has, the speed that he has, the live arm that he has, Really, like the only thing that we talk probably negatively about Riley Leonard is a little bit of that deep ball accuracy. But if he can improve that, he's going to be a very solid quarterback prospect, maybe even a first round pick if he decides to come out this year or ultimately in the 2025 draft class. But like I said, a lot of times so far, this is a loaded quarterback class for the 2024 NFL draft. Riley Leonard is just another one of those quarterbacks. But with that being said, we're going to get over to my game of the week. So there's a lot of good games out there this week. And the game that I wanted to highlight was one of the closest point spreads, about as close as you can get at this point in time. It's only a one-point favorite in this game. So we have number 22, Florida. That is a record of 3-1 and one going against Kentucky at home. Kentucky is 4-0 to start the season. Kentucky is one-point home favorite. So this is expected to be an incredibly close game. Over-under in this game is 45 points. 
Uh, I'm just going to say right off the bat, I probably take the over on the total points for that game. That line may or may not change as we get closer to game time. So just keep an eye on that. But when you're looking at both these teams, both have transfer quarterbacks. Florida has Graham Mertz, who did come over from Wisconsin. He's actually played a lot better at Florida than he did at Wisconsin. But, you know, that's kind of a different system and everything else like that. So it's good to see him doing pretty well as a former four-star recruit. And then on the Kentucky side, they got Devin Leary, who transferred over from NC State to Kentucky. He's had a pretty solid start to the season as well. So definitely interested in both those guys. Uh, Ray Ray Davis, the running back, transferred over to Kentucky as well. Uh, I believe he's at Vanderbilt before that. And then on the Florida side, at running back, we have uh, Montreal Johnson, who transferred over with Billy Napier from Louisiana. And then their other running back, Trevor Etienne, who is the brother of Travis Etienne, who had a pretty strong freshman season as well. Uh, Ricky Purcell is kind of the main wide receiver for Florida. On the Kentucky side, we have some young, pretty talented wide receivers there as well. And Dane Key and Barry and Brown, who both are true sophomores, both had a pretty decent freshman season. Should make for a pretty interesting game. This game series has kind of gone back and forth throughout the years. Uh, Kentucky's won the last two before that. Florida won the last two before, prior to that. So, very interested in this game. I think Kentucky ultimately pulls it off, but going to be a very close hopefully competitive game uh, but definitely do like this one just in general as it is projected to be quite close overall but with that being said we'll get off this game we'll and we'll get over to my favorite prop for week number five of college football so like I kind of teased at least early on this is a prop that is for Friday night this game starts I believe at eight o'clock central time or eight o'clock eastern time can't remember which one off the top of my head but it is Oregon State wide receiver Anthony Gold over 40 and a half for receiving yards for this game. They're going against Utah, two ranked teams at that. And Gold did hit the over in six out of 10 games last year in 2022. And he has hit the over in all three games in 2023. He's averaging about 72 receiving yards per game so far this season. Did get a little bit of a quarterback upgrade with DJU coming in over, I believe it was chase nolan last year that was the quarterback for them i think that was his name i can't remember off the top of my head they were a little bit more run centric last year a little bit more balanced at this point in time he does face utah in week five typically utah does have some pretty good corners but at this point in time utah is allowing 261.7 receiving yards per game passing yards per game which is like 90th in the country at this point in time so it does look like a pretty favorable matchup here we only need 41 yards out of gold and he can probably get that on one play if he really wanted to he's a little bit smaller wide receiver a little bit explosive though and does offer some big play opportunities there if you look at what we've done so far on the season it's three and two record last week braylon allen did hit the over for us with 116 rushing yards so three straight there hopefully anthony gold keeps that streak continuing for week number five of college football but with that being said you know i like to keep this video pretty short and sweet and to the point if you guys want to talk anything college football whatsoever feel free to drop it down in the comments reach out to me on twitter at coach craig sport be more than happy to talk any college football any prospects anything else like that but with that being said definitely do appreciate each and every one of you tuning into this video it does mean a lot to me i know it means a lot to the rest of the sports affiliation crew make sure that you do get subscribed to the youtube channel the sports affiliation be sure to like comment and subscribe get that notification bell turned on so you never miss a beat with any of the great content that does come out throughout the week in addition to my show coach goes back to college and then last but not least with that being be sure to check out my YouTube channel, Coach Craig Sports, for all your DFS needs. Uh, MLB is just over at this point in time. It's the last day uh, for the regular season, uh, Monday through Friday, that I do typically do. I got CFL DFS video up once a week, NFL DFS video up once a week. I'm going to do a little bit more content here for a little bit of fantasy football waivers and stuff like that. So definitely be sure to check that out as the week moves along and definitely would appreciate your support over there as well.